You know, Bitcoin's essentially been consolidating in this area um, up in here. You know, after we had this huge um, gap up, we had this very odd line up here where we kind of exploded up from a lower high or lower low. I mean, I know we touched, you know, where this previous volume was, but you, know, you can't convince me that there was a lot of volume sitting here waiting for this. Um, you know, um, but that's the first thing. So this was kind of a bit odd. You know, this wasn't like a bull flag or anything like that. So it's a bit unusual. But then we came back up here, you know, we legged it up again, um, quite quickly. And then this again was very unusual price where we don't really expect it, where we, we did like a, we did have like a bull flag here, right? Which was bullish. Um, we did kind of consolidate price narrowed in this, in this, um, you know, range here. And then we shot back up and we tested a new high. However, you know, if you're making the case that this is bullish price action, which it you know definitely looks like it, um, you know, you have to be mindful of where we came from, right? And then we've had bearish price action for almost a year. You know, this doesn't really look, you know, scream bullish in this area right here. So if we are saying this is bullish price action, it's very odd that once we made a high, we literally just lost all bullishness whatsoever. It's very odd, you know? Um, and so, you know, I've always said this, but there's like two types of, you know, price action to the upside, right? You have your bullish price, bullish price action, which is like this, right? Right. This is like what's sustainable. And, you know, this is not sustainable, right? This is going to come back down eventually. So, you know, this is like when you see this first kind of bullish price action, you know, when you have something that comes down, it's not going to just come down right away. You know, if it does get kind of more bearish. You know, it'll come down, but retest all this volume along the way and then come back up, right? It's very odd for something to just go straight bullish and making, you know, really good price movement and then just go all of a sudden bearish, right? But this, I don't really consider bullish price action, even though it does look like a nice J here, which we do consider a J bullish, right? I don't really consider this necessarily bullish price action. Um, you know, I consider this more bullish price action. And we have something that makes, you know, really good price or really good movement like this. I don't expect it to just go the complete opposite direction. Um, you know, it'll start making lower highs, lower lows, and then start to kind of fall off a little bit. That's what we see with Adam right now. Um, if you look at the price um, or the price move of Adam. So in this case, you know, this did look a little bit bullish in this area, right? And we had this explosion up. There's a breakout. This is a little bit confusing in here. You know, it's hard to really figure out what what's going on here. Um, you know, I looked at the volume and the volume was not good up until literally you know two candles before it um was when the you know the volume really increased you know up here if we did say that this was you know a bull flag and whatnot we had this breakout it's very odd to say that we had this sustainable bullish price action like up here and then all of a sudden we just dumped you know that that's quite unusual um to see um and to just start coming back down so it was a bit odd you know um to see that which makes me think that Again, this was not necessarily, you know, maybe this was not, you know, such, you know, bullish price movement as we thought. Um, but it's something we're going to have to watch, right? You know, no one can predict where this thing is going next, but we could definitely use the tools um, at our disposal to, you know, get into good trades at the tops and the bottoms. So what's happened next? Well, we came down, um, retested this low, came back up, and we actually made a higher high here on the local, right? And we've had some good bullish price action going up this low right here is a little odd okay it is higher than this one over here but you know it's a bit odd to say the least now you could you could make the argument that this dump right here is filling old orders from 17.1 however we were just at 17.1 and we just broke 17.1 so i don't really buy that either um so you know what's going on now well it looks like the the market really hasn't figured out what's going to go. We know what's going to happen next with this. Um, you know, it's kind of just like list. What's it called? Being listful or something? I don't know. Kind of just moping around up here until it figures out what it wants to do. But it does look like, you know, each of these um, resistances have very, very good uh, rejections at them. So you can see that this this level right here had a very good 17118 had a very good rejection at it right here the next one up had again a very good rejection at it so oh 1.9 million cell coming in right now 
So in that case, move this over a little bit. There we go. 1.9 million cell here, huh? Yeah, there we go. Um, so in that case, you know, I would look for shorts at these levels, at these key levels. Like, you know, the next short up is going to be 314. We are testing for a new high at that point. So that's going to be a very strong level um, to focus on. I think last stream we did talk about either, you know, focusing on 312 or the next level up, which is 435. So, um, you know, that's the plan. Now, if you're looking to long, though, um, let's let's draw our volume profile and let's see what's going on in this range up here. Because um, this is, you know, kind of developing to become a range in here. So we can really see, um, you know, when we, when we range trade, you know, we can draw our fixed range volume profiles and see where the volume is in this area. And it looks like we do have quite a bit of volume where, we, where we've gone sideways the most, which is right at 16,960 um, in this level. And I'm guessing this is probably a pivot from yesterday. This is probably the daily pivot from yesterday because it lo looks like it's pretty well respected. Um, but again, you know, if you're thinking that we're going to be bullish, look for the level that is above the previous low, right? So if this was our previous low here at 16.8, I would look for the next one up above this to make a higher low because you want to be longing at a higher low. You want to be shorting at a lower high. Okay. Ideally. So if you're, if you're thinking this is bullish, depending on how bullish you think it is, maybe look for a long down here at this VAL, right? At 16.838. Um, but this daily pivot right here, 16.8. 870, 880 is where I would expect um, possibly a local bottom to come in if we break through this uh, current 17k level right here. Um, 17k doesn't look like a bad long either, but it looks like we had just tested it right before we came um, to this area. So I would look for a, you know, if you're looking to long, you know, look for a long at 16, 870. Um, you know, that would be a good long at a higher low. But if you're looking to short, I would be looking up here at 17, 31. Now, what am I going to do? So I'm going to adapt to the market, right? So regardless of, you know, where I think it's going, if it comes down, I'm going to be looking for a long there. And if it goes up, I'm going to be looking for a short there. I think, you know, either way you can make money off this, um, regardless of which way it's going to go. Eventually you can make money off these. You can literally make money off of every support and resistance there is. Um, even on the drops when you know we're moving a million miles a second, you can still put your orders in ahead of time at those key levels catch the big wick and sell it, you know, 40, 50% profits. Very easy to do. So I, you know, highly recommend, um, you know, um, shorting the tops, longing the bottoms. And, you know, you never know that, you know, maybe that'll be the bottom that we go to, you know, 800 K or maybe that'll be the top when we go down to eight cents. Right now, if we look at the volume, more of the volume on Bitcoin, this is what's really concerning here. So, so there's two, two lines down here to look at. Now, if you use my template, you'll see that you might only see this green line down here and your green line may look a little bit different than mine and that's okay. I have mine split up into two right now, just so we can see this for our own education purposes. Okay. So I have this top line separated into the retail buyers, meaning that anyone who's bought anywhere above a um, $0 to below a hundred K. Okay. So they're in this top line right here and this is your volume Delta. Okay. This white line down here is the other volume Delta. I have in my chart and these are more of the whales. So this is anyone who's bought over a hundred thousand is going to be down here. Okay. And it's interesting to see because you know, you can see where retail is buying, Maybe it's just whales pumping it. Um, and you know, if we go back over here and we look at this, you can see that, uh, where was it? This last time we pumped up here, it was almost entirely organic, um, at each of these pumps, right? So this pump up right here was entirely organic, you know, retail and, I mean, you can see we had bullish consolidation here, bullish price action, you know, people slowly accumulating and buying, right? Volume delta is going up. Open interest is kind of stagnant, but you know, that's nothing big. You can see that's the blue line. You can see this yellow line. These are the top traders on Binance. I don't know whether they're going long or short. And you can see that for the most part, they are eventually kind of going 
more long on it, right? Which as we can see, it is going up. Um, and you see that these are more or less the green and the white line where the green is retail and white are the whales. It is more or less, you know, kind of in line with each other going up together. Um, then when we got up to here, you can see when we got up to here, retail is completely getting out. <laughs> They've, you know, completely gotten out right here. They don't really believe in this at all. Um, and it looks like they've kind of sold off while the whales are eventually kind of doing the same thing. See how the big traders are kind of getting out slowly, but you know, that's not to say that, you know, we're going to go down because it does look like it's holding, but it is making lower lows, right? It's slowly making lower lows on the way down. Um, but anytime this can change, right? So if we look at our open interest, our open interest is kind of going up. Now, if our longs are going up and our open interest is going up, that means that more people are probably opening up longs, right? Um, as more people are opening up contracts. But um, in this case, you can see our top traders on Binance, the shell line. It is generally going down. Let me change the time frame um, so we can get a better idea here looking at it. So open interest is gradually going up. These top traders on Binance look like they're steadily kind of climbing up here. But again, you know, the whales and the retail look like they're largely getting out of this. Um, for the time being. Now again, this could change at any point, so we'll need to keep an eye on this um, to see if volume starts going up. We should see some positive divergence in the volume prior to us going up. Um, so yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on this. But right now, it doesn't look like you know, um, like you know, many people are really kind of believing in making a new high from here. Um, you know, when we really zoom out on things and look at the volume, you know, again, if we look at this green line down here, you can see that according to the price action here. Uh, let me let me zoom out one more time. You can see that this uh, green line. Let me uh, hide the other ones for you, so we can all see this together. So you can see that here, you know, delta and volume are gradually going up for this entire area right here. Okay, and that makes sense, right? That makes sense. Um, here though, it looks like it's kind of fallen off a little bit. Again, another climb up here. When we made you know this steady. Climb back up here, or I guess that was actually the second one. It's more like this, right? But now it looks like retail is kind of not really believing in this much anymore. Um, you know, which is not a good sign um, for trying to make a, a new high um, up here. Now with the whales, when we really zoomed out on it here, we can see the whales are actually believing this a little bit more. You know, usually they're a little bit late to the party. Um, you know, unless they're actually driving the party, right? So in this case, you see the whales were a little bit behind in retail, um, you know, buying in and stuff, but they're holding strong for the time being. Now, since retail's already kind of gotten out, we'll have to see what the whales do here. I would expect them to more or less follow and start, you know, dumping here. When we look over the side, we do have some, you know, some buy bidders that really don't believe in cryptocurrency, classic buy bidders. Um, you know, selling their, their large stacks over here. Um, so yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on this, um, uh, you know, as the night goes on and see what happens here. But yeah, it doesn't look good like retail is kind of getting out. The whales are still, you know, still buying, but, um, you know, with this open interest going up, if shorts are going up as well, I would expect these, um, op these, uh, open interests is primarily people opening up shorts. Uh, so I'll we'll have to keep an eye on. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congrats. Most people finish early, but you made it the full distance. That's awesome. If you're looking to learn how to trade crypto, check out one of these other videos.